Hey everyone, Srini here, founder of the Unmistakable Creator Podcast and a creator of the Notion Essentials YouTube channel. And today what I want to talk about is how you create to-do lists in Notion. As I talked about in the How to Get Started with Notion video, Notion is a really powerful tool that allows you to do pretty much everything in one app. So you're no longer switching between your task manager, your email, your writing tool, or whatever it is that you use. And all of us pretty much use to-do lists on a daily basis for every single thing that we do. Um, you know, whether it's planning your day out or whether it's going through a David Allen framework uh, for getting things done, a to-do list is sort of one of the basic building blocks of productivity. Uh, we all use them in some form or another. So I want to talk briefly about how to actually create them. Notion gives you a couple of different options to create to-do lists. One is just a basic to-do list. So for example, it gives you a couple of check boxes where you can say, for example, create second video for my YouTube channel. So you could make a list, uh, publish the video or upload it, and uh, you know, close my email. So you could see that basically you have this very simple building block and each time you uh, check one off, it allows you to cross them off. Now, this is great for a really, really simple to-do list, but let's say that you have a more complicated to-do list and I actually prefer this and I'll go into detail uh, about this one when we go uh, into how to create projects. But one of the things that I really like about Notion is that it allows you to create uh, inline tables. And tables are really useful because you can actually treat this more like a database. Uh, so for example, it gives you a bunch of different properties that you can have. So in this case, for example, we can say, okay, this is gonna be uh, a deadline for our task. The other thing I really like about this is that you can add all sorts of relevant material to the task. So for example, if there's a person you wanna add that you wanna assign it to, you can do that. You can add URLs. Uh, but one of the things that I find incredibly useful is the status component or the ability to choose here. So in this case, you know, we named it files, but we're going to call this status. And what you can say for your status is you can say in progress. And every time you type one status in, you'll see here it creates uh, an option uh, for status uh, done, you know, completed. Uh, or you can do up next, which is one of the things that Notion's default template does. Uh, but you'll see here they also have different colors for each one of these, so that way you can distinguish you know, between them. So for example, if I have a task titled writing a book, uh, recording a podcast, checking my email, and you can see what you can do is you can give each one of these tasks a status. And we can also assign a deadline uh, to one of them. So for example, I could say, oh, this is up tomorrow, this is up today, the other thing that's really cool is that Notion allows you to sort. So we can actually sort, for example, if we wanted to by um, deadline, or we can say, okay, we're gonna sort this descending, so you'll see this goes to the bottom, but if we sort it ascending, it would go to the top. So you could sort by date, which is really, really useful. And where this actually starts to become uh, much more useful is when you start to take on bigger and bigger projects. Uh, a couple of other things that this allows you to do, as I said, is you can add a field where you can say, okay, person, um, and then you could say, okay, if I'm working with a team member, you can say, okay, this is assigned to, and we'll get into how to use Notion for collaboration uh, in another video. Um, but you'll see here that it actually gives you the people who are in your workspace uh, that you could assign these to. And so, like I said, this becomes really powerful when you start to work on bigger projects. Now, the other thing that is really neat is that Notion also allows you to filter. So for example, uh, if I wanted to, I could actually um, you know, filter these goals uh, if I wanted to uh, by, uh, by doing this. And then you could say, okay, show only tasks to, that are assigned to me, or you can actually add a specific filter. So one of the things that I like to do is, you know, when I have, for example, we have status, right? So if we say that status is, uh, you know, not completed, any of the tasks that are completed will automatically disappear from there. And you can do this with a bunch of different tasks. Uh, so the filters are a really powerful way to actually sort of reduce cognitive bandwidth and prevent all of this from feeling like complete chaos. Uh, again, this is a really, really, really powerful tool. I think to-do lists are a really good place to start if you're unsure of where to start with Notion or how to use it, uh, just because it'll give you an option to play around with all of the various different features within Notion. And you know this to-do list can become as complex or as simple as you want it to be. Um, and this little checklist to-do list is really great for your sort of, you know, in the morning immediate to-dos. But if you're working on a bigger project that has deadlines and multiple people assigned, you definitely want to go with something like this. So 
those are the basics of how to create to-do lists in Notion. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. You can also send me emails at notionessentials at unmistakablemedia.com.